You're listening to the Precision Shooting Podcast, discussing all aspects of precision and long range rifle shooting. This episode is brought to you by Impact Dynamics. And now, over to your hosts. Well, hello and welcome to the Precision Shooting Podcast. My name is Rusty, and this is episode number 123. And, uh, Got the uh, regular crew in here, Andy. Right next to me, we're in the Delta Tactical Steel Apocalypse shirt, nice and bright, mate. Yeah, yeah. It seems to be all my wardrobe these days are just like <laughs> match tops. I'm pretty much saying the same. I'm wearing the the new Ignition Custom one for the match next uh, week. Awesome, awesome. This one's a hoodie. This one's real flash. Although it's getting quite warm in here. Bronte, speaking of getting warm in here, how are you, mate? Yeah, willing yourself, Rusty. Good. I thought you said willing. <laughs> Well, hey, you okay. know, it's not one to rule anything out. <laughs> it's getting warm and Bronte's willing. Uh, speaking of willing, Dutchy, how are you on the subject, mate? Oh, I feel like I'm going to let the team down. I'm, <laughs> I'm not willing, no. Disinterested? Oh, no, I'm, I just, I don't know where that was going, so I'm just opting out. Not, yeah, I think I think we should all opt out, Bronte. <laughs> I, think. I don't think that's a bad life decision. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So it's been a, a few weeks since our uh, last session together. How's everyone done any shooting? Yes. Yes. I so have. Andy is. Uh, oh, you went hunting with your yeet cannon, didn't you? Yep. Yep. For those no, who are following well. Instagram. Yeah. Yep. How'd it go? No, it was a, it was a really good trip. Just went a um, couple of hours north of Oruru, which is probably six hours north of Adelaide for people who yeah, five six ish. Yep. So, um, yeah, yeah, it was good. Just a quick two night sort of um, spiel just with a couple of mates. Get get the campfire going. Run a mark, get some bit of hunting in, yeah, playing around a bit. Very nice, mate. Very nice. And uh, yeah, you got got plenty of game. Yes, yeah. So we we were after um, just a few goat up there, uh, mainly for meat. Um, but yeah, obviously there. Some were for company, were they? <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah. don't know what what else did. Well, they were a bit mainly stiff for meat, and, but a bit you know, stiff and cold. But <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was a cold night. <laughs> I was a lonely yeah. man. <laughs> so uh, Dutchy is willing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I reckon. <laughs> All less things. Good. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So apart from that, um, yeah, obviously just uh, getting a few ruse as well and bits and pieces. So Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. No, that was good. Bronnie, what about yourself, mate? You been shooting? No, not very much at the yeah, moment. Yeah, the other weekend at the club. I'm trying to think if you were. Yeah, I yeah, did you, actually. Yeah, yeah, I shot this in a fine match. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Did you win? Don't think so. Did think anything you did break? Right. I did okay. Did well, anything break? <laughs> only, yeah, a little bit. Um, yes, a little bit. Okay, what broke? Uh, no, I was punching a couple primers to start with and then I did a bit of um, on-the-range tweaking and reduced the um, depth of protrusion on my firing pin, which seemed to resolve the problem, which was great. Good. And then I... Got my magazines mixed up. I've got one magazine that feeds great, one magazine that leaves a bit to be desired. And yep. we, yeah, that kind of frustrated me a couple of times. But yeah. Okay. Good. Dutchy, any uh, shooting from yourself, mate, or are you still just prepping? Uh, it's been so long I can't remember. <laughs> I'm going to have to. Just say yes. Just say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm yeah. glad it went well for you. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Well, uh, I went shooting today. Yeah, right. Oh, no, no, those were snap caps. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought we'd moved on. <laughs> on my way yeah, you there. moved Oh, I wasn't willing. <laughs> uh, I went shooting today, although today's uh, shoot was one of those, I don't know if you guys have done it, an administrative shoot. So I, I went out and just like ran off the, the end of some ammo here and just freed up some brass there and just tied it up, you know, said some uh, leftover nine mil this packet, you know, eight rounds of this and 10 rounds of that and just virtually just an ammo dump really. Um, just got rid of stuff and then realised that the three guns I was also meant to bring down, I forgot. Um, mm. Yeah, I took seven with me and I was meant to take 10 it seemed. Anyway, that's uh, that's what happened when you prep for a for a shoot at one in the morning and then, you know, get up early and go go organise it. But it doesn't quite go to plan. Uh, so, But I hit some targets, so that was good. Well, that's, that's generally the aim. Yeah, I get it. Aim. Nice. Oh, well done. Double and tundra. <laughs> Spot on. Spot on. Uh, so, yeah, I had an administrative shoot uh, and it was, uh, it was good. But I shot the rimfire match the other week. Oh, yeah? How did that uh, turn uh, out for you? Slowly. I was still recovering uh, from a back injury. Uh, 
and uh, I. So you didn't do well. Is, is this leading into the excuse why you didn't win? No, I did okay. Damn, it. did all right. Um, but I was just slow. I was slow, so I, I did. Uh, I didn't go through the, the. You know, I didn't finish much at many of the stages for that reason. So just took it easy, and uh, still not unhappy with with hitting. My hit rate was okay. I was, I was okay with the hit rate. So, but um, you had fun. I did enjoy the, it, yeah. And and game. what was what was really exciting about that particular shoot is is my squad was five of us: myself, five or six, uh, myself and Trav, and Trav Harris. And then uh, we also had four guys, uh, three three other guys in our um, in our squad who were all borrowing a gun from me. So uh, one was a really new shooter. One was a irregular shooter. Uh, Aaron from Kai Kai. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and then one was Dan uh, Inkle, who oh, right. got out for a shoot, which was Lovely. great to, to see him out for it. He's been on this podcast several times and uh, he haven't had, probably hasn't shot a gun for near on a year and came fourth. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, right. He, uh, he absolutely smashed it, uh, which was uh, une- not unexpected. Yeah, it's. Dude yeah, knows what he he's knows doing. knows what he's doing. Yeah, but it was good fun. It was a good rimfire shoot, and uh, had a guy actually had a, a, a bloke come out, and it was his first time out. Uh, I think he's just got his license. I think he's just got a gun or something, and and re, you know rekindling the affair with with firearms from many years ago. And he hadn't even bought a gun to the to the to the thing. He just wanted to check the club out. And we're, we're sitting around for lunch. I'm like, "Are you uh, you going to shoot the the comp?" He's like, "Uh, yeah, all right." And I'm like. Spot on, mate. Like that's you know, just jump you know, in. He didn't even yeah. have a gun or ammo, <laughs> and he's just like, so does someone have a ammo and gun that I could use. I'm like, yeah, we got you covered there. But you know, just your attitude of yeah, I'll shoot it because yep. you can only learn by doing. So Absolutely. that was that was really uh, really good to see. Uh, highly encouraged by that. As rimfire shoots are great like that. They're oh, very uh, yeah. accessible to yeah. a new shooter. Yeah. You, know, you can have a lot of fun even without yeah you know, all the gear. Mm. Everyone's willing to go. Yeah, yeah, go your hardest. Yeah. Five bucks of ammo, go knock yourself out. <laughs> That's right. It's not, it's not like an it's so overly expensive beast. Someone was telling me that they were out shooting 50 cal the other day. Oh, and they yeah. were, you know, pinging 10 bucks, a, 10 bucks a trigger pull. I'm like, that's an entire rimfire match for me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's pushing it. Yeah. So 50 cal is not quite my bag. Uh, although I've seen, seen a couple of guys practice uh, some 50 cal stuff for the upcoming uh, world titles or at least national titles at uh, Warwick and Beale. Coming up, so I think Matt, I might try and get those boys on. Talk about it, absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, it's interesting for, mm. for sure. It's not yeah, definitely. I'm not heaps keen on shooting it myself because I value my shoulders. But um, it's uh, one of those things you'd have a crack at it at least once. Oh yeah, I've, I've shot I've shot them before. Yeah, it's not it's not something I'm shying away from. I've shot them, mm. but um, yeah, just uh, I'll let them do it. It's good fun, good fun. So what else is uh, what else is coming up? We got uh, we got the steel slam coming up at our club at Practical Shooting SA. Uh, how many of you guys shooting that? You shooting it, Andy? You haven't booked in, have you? I haven't no? booked in. Yeah. Oh, but you going to shoot it? I hope so. What do you mean? I need you hope to, so? Well, you, I need you to need... look at my deep. Oh work yeah, make sure you're round. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about what you, I mean. Bronnie? You going to have a crack? Uh, I should. Yeah. I haven't <laughs> got myself organised yet. I think you no. should aim to do it. I should aim to. <laughs> yeah. And eventually, I might hit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's going to be yeah. good fun. It's uh, Brennan. Can we give it? I'm, to def- you? I'm definitely in there. In, I'm in for who, it? Who's uh, rifle and ammunition am I using? You can use mine. There you yeah. go. Bang. I, I, if so I can borrow one of those, I'll Andy's. Mine's not very reliable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bloody magazine. <laughs> oh, firing pins <laughs> protruding too far. Oh, my bolt handle fell off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh no. Actually, surprisingly, that didn't happen. <laughs> surprisingly, surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, the Loctite was enough. <laughs> Good. So, uh, cool. Well, you should. You should. That's uh, 14th of September for anyone listening. If oh, you're man, out, sorry. No. Ah, bugger. If you're anywhere near uh, near Monado, I can get Monado that way. You can camp there for a couple of nights. We've got plenty of uh, plenty of guys. Both this will be their first match, their first larger match for some of them, their first match of any type for some of them, and also some guys who are really experienced to share their wealth and uh, and their knowledge. Maybe not their wealth. I'm not sure they're so keen on that. And it will be uh, – It's it's – a bigger event, but it's pretty low key in terms of there's not a lot of riding on it. Um, although, uh, having Depends mentioned, if you make some side bets. Well, there is some side bets going on Ooh. with the match. Do, have we we've mentioned the state of origin, haven't we? Oh yes, I'm sure we've mentioned the state of origin. So that match will so as an aside, it's an individual match. You go and cheat and enjoy and, and have fun. Um, have got a little bit of a plan for something a little bit different, unusual with one of the stages, but you have to wait to see what that is. 
the state of origin side of things, it's going to be, I think, the top four shooters from both SA and Victoria, their scores will go towards the state of origin trophy to work out uh, which state is best. I mean, we know which state is best, but um, to like put the trophy in the hands of whoever you know, does all right on the way. Well, it really depends. If, if SA wins, of course SA was the best. So, you know, that's it. Whereas if Victoria win, they had just, they just had a good day. Well, it just becomes an encouragement. That's right. Then. Yeah, we just we, – but then they're still in the in the beginning stages of their club, so we want yeah, them to, supporting know, want them to them. feel good. Yeah. So it's we'll, a bit like we have... do with left-handers. <laughs> oh, let's not let's not speak <laughs> to that level. <laughs> so let's uh, let's keep this upper class, mate. And so we uh, we look forward to uh, we look forward to that state of origin side of things, and then heading over to Victoria. And uh, you know, if we've if we've donated them the trophy for a little while, we'll just we'll go over there and grab it back from them. Yep, that's yeah, it. yeah, it's yeah, a little bit sort of uh, admin sort of work. That's good. Um, what else we got to uh, mention? The uh, Precision Rifle Australia group that we mentioned in the last podcast and and had a few people jump on board uh, has grown, which apparently these things do on Facebook, and um, I think it's somewhere in the vicinity of five hundred and something plus right. people. Uh, that's pretty good. Y- yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, let's have a, have a little look. I should have, you know, prepped it earlier, but, uh, we'll we can edit this, this out. No, no, we, we don't edit anything out ever. Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know how to, uh, there we go. 600, whoa, 625 members. That's, uh, that's jumped up since I last looked. Uh, anyway, so thanks to guys who have jumped in on there and it's been really good, particularly those guys who are asking questions or replying and mm. putting up information. And there is some like. You know, we, we like to think we know a fair few of the guys who know their stuff around the country and those guys are, you know, commenting and being involved in discussions. It's really good to see that knowledge being shared. So thanks to the guys who are, who are achieving what we were hoping to achieve is like mm. a really good resource and good knowledge base, uh, directly related to PRS and precision rifle and, and all those things, all aspects of those things. Well, most aspects, we, we mm. save all aspects for this podcast, of course. Let's do this as a new segment that's just, uh, we've just decided to do. Uh, top post from the Precision Rifle Australia, we're going to uh, check out and comment on. Uh, hi everyone, I'm currently have a two... Uh, 243 hunting rifle, but I'm new to precision rifles and looking at getting one soon. What caliber would be good be- beginner size for club competition? Any recommendations and advice would be greatly appreciated. What's good good advice so far. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> what sort of club use? That's obviously oh, based on the group. I'm assuming the sort of PRS yeah. style thing. To be honest, yeah, if, yeah. Well, new to precision rifles and looking to get something mm. for club use. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, six five Crete it is a pretty good choice. Your two four three, there's nothing wrong with that either, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, either two four three or six five Crete are mm. as good yep. as anything. Yep, it's working for me. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna throw something different in the mix. Uh, I don't disagree with what you guys said, but we we'll, may as well just throw another answer in there. Um, two two three. I'm going to um, Ooh, yes. put in a 2D3 as a potential, making sure your twist right, a uh, twist right. <coughs> Good job, great bad guy. Um, twist rate is correct. Is that because you don't like spotters? <laughs> <laughs> well, given that most uh, most clubs at the moment, you know, sort of sub 500 metres or 500 metres, and, and, and mm. if you're going to be shooting clubs, you know, really, really good to be shooting monthly or however mm. often they run and so keep your ammo prices down. Now this is this is with the mindset it's in conjunction with a with a higher level comp gun perhaps or you're working mm-hmm. towards that sort of thing. But a two D three if that's what you got or that's what you want to do and keep your ammo prices down, uh, I will not um, I will suggest that that is a good consideration. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I am and, and I know that I'm not the only one at my club, our club, because we're pretty much all there. Uh no the only one not at our club who is thinking about Getting a two to three, or I've got a two to three barrel action, chucking mm. into something, putting a scope on it, and using that for the club comps, so we can you know shoot the club comps without any sort of significant financial burden, and yep. then save the the nicer guns or the the other ones for some practice, maybe the occasional club comp, maybe if you know there's a comp the week before a PRS match or something like that, mm-hmm. really sensible. But for the uh, the so the week in, week out, the month in, month out comps, keep that price down. Mm. That's yeah, not that's yeah. stupid idea. Yeah, I mean, I've pretty much done that. I had a that's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah had an old Remington two D three. It was actually my idea. You owe me royalties. What? Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> as much <laughs> as most people would, may disagree, but a three hundred eight is probably also not a bad option for that. Be- for the added benefit 
is you probably learn a little bit more about your recoil management with a 308 than you would over a 223. Yep. Yep. So if you get, well, I mean, my 223 doesn't have a break. So it actually feels quite similar to the 6.5. Yeah, the okay. Break. Very cool. Yep. Um, okay. But yeah. No, I, I like the fact that I can go to the range and punch through oh, 70, 100 rounds. Well, thinking about it now, it's still quite expensive. But yeah, <laughs> it's a lot less expensive. Well, at a dollar, a, lot, a dollar a shot versus. Yeah, that's it. In the ballpark of a dollar sixty. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But, yeah, that's it. You get more more trigger time and more just more practice. Yeah, and I know if a number of guys are looking at doing that and running factory ammo. Uh, yeah, it. That's so it. Well, that, some of that OSA stuff. stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. smash it. Well, that's it. Yeah, I'll just bloody grain. consistent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I use for all my hunting stuff as well now. It's, yeah, it's solid. Mm. Mm. Okay. Anyway, so uh, we 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 now have a new segment each uh, each episode. We'll grab the top question or the current latest question on that group and answer it. Um, we may not do that next episode. So just just or, or ever again, but. Anyway, mm. it was good so so far. Mm. All aspects. All aspects. Uh, probably actually doubles up with some questions we're about to hit shortly, but uh, that's uh, tis the case. It is the case. I did a, uh, a much requested, um, no one asked for it, a YouTube video the other day for Atlas Bipods uh, where we covered all the different models, although it is a big, like a question I get a lot. Like, mm. What's the difference between all these different models? They all look the same, which is pretty fair. And so if you haven't you seen just that. got tired of lying to them. Ah, oh, they're all the same. They're all the same. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, just pile. It's so, semantics, really. <laughs> yeah, just one of each, really, is probably what you need. This one looks like it's got a sling swivel attachment. Nah, 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 nah. All the same. <laughs> They've all got eliminators. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they're all top quality. <laughs> they are, actually. Oh. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, the back part of it, didn't it? Because they are actually decent. Yeah. yeah so. And you caught me with no drink. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, he, someone said quality. Go on. <laughs> May, uh, Patreons may be the only ones who get that, actually. I've actually <laughs> noticed I've started saying quality more just in my day-to-day vocabulary mm-hmm. after a certain gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to say it three times. Really God, I've been drunk a lot. Quality, quality, quality. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So, I've, uh, been, I've been shooting in water. <laughs> <laughs> From grass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I do that video, and uh, and so hopefully if that's helpful to you, if it's a question you've mm. got about uh, Harris bipods, run through pretty much all the models. Just missed one, which Atlas. was uh, the same. Or oh, Atlas, sorry, yeah, Atlas, Atlas, Atlas. All, all the models of Atlas. So I should clarify the whole yeah. Atlas, all aspects yep. of all Atlas, round Atlas, the entire Atlas. Uh, Atlas I went through the globe. Atlas. Not the globe. So actually, an oblique spheroid, technically. Anyway. <laughs> Good. Dutchie's got a follow up when he uh, where he takes you takes you around the uh, around the world. Uh, with, a, with an actual atlas. With an atlas. Yeah. yeah, covers all aspects of the atlas. All atlas. atlas. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You, you definitely got a mouth for radio, mate. Good. Cheers. <laughs> Excellent. I all wish right. I could say the same for you, but yeah, you know, no, you're stuck doing podcasts. And I know. I'm out setting the world on fire with my radio atlas technique. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So uh, we put up on Facebook and uh, Instagram uh, that we would like some questions for tonight because in doing all these uh, podcast videos, I realised we haven't done like a straight flat out questions episode. So we're going to do a couple of those now. We uh, we have a question that came in. Oh, uh, all right. So this email came in from Christopher or Chris uh, Gabelli. I believe Chris is in the US. Here we go. Just wanted to say that I really enjoy your podcast. Nice to hear someone who covers all aspects of precision rifle shooting and, well, and long range, just just so he's got that covered. With that being said, this that is why I'm reaching out to you and your group. Here we go. He's going to call us on whether we cover all aspects. This is just, dangerous. Yeah, before yeah. we get into this, I just want to clarify, we did we did point out that we, we don't necessarily cover them well. We just cover them all. Mm. It's a bit of a broad brush approach. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We cover them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Level of competency is up for discussion. Uh, this is my first year competing in long range competitions. I've competed in six or seven so far. That's good. But I'm ready and getting ready for my first low light comp. Since I'm in the United States and night shooting is very limited, what kind of advice or tips slash tricks should I be aware of? So I do not make a complete ass out of myself. Any help is truly appreciated either way. Keep up the good work. Your podcasts always make me laugh. Well, I don't really think that we should give much advice about being an ass because we've kind of <laughs> not been an ass. We kind of fall into that category generally, but yeah. 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 Well, that's me and Bronte out. So, uh. <laughs> so over to you guys. <laughs> 
I was just gonna say, get a get a good torch, get a good spotlight, mm-hmm. low light, just get more light down range. So, so let's let's <laughs> clarify this by saying, well, I don't I don't believe any of us has shot a night competition yet. No, no, no. but we have. I suspect all of us have shot extensively spotlighting. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure we can, uh, Chris, we can talk about the, the lessons we could draw from that across. Um, you may have to apply them to a competition uh, aspect, but we can tell some of you, uh, the things that we would do in, in that spotlighting scenario that you may, uh, you may be able to apply to the competition side of things. And uh, just a little shout out to Butters, Night Match, Night Stages oh, next yeah, year. Yeah. Butters, nice. come on, yeah. listening. Mm. Get on to it. Anyway. Andy, just, you look like just, you're raring to go. Def, did he say long range night shoot? Was it a long range comp? It is a long range comp, yeah. but it'll, it'll be like a normal sort of PRSE yeah. type yeah. comp yeah. with distance. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Does it? Uh, sorry, I was sort of trying to clarify on what yeah. a low light low light comp is. Dark. Just trying to. It's dark. Dark. Not very much light. light. Not a lot of light. Yeah. Yeah. That's very vague. <laughs> yes. And somewhat not answering my question. <laughs> <laughs> so what. I, I well, guess what I'm trying to say is are the targets lit up or do you have to provide your own light or a, is it just at dusk, sort of dawn, dusk? It's a it's a, it's a a fair question, Dutchie. You, fair enough, you got us. So some of these matches will generally either light the target up with a light nearby to it or what, what uh, Butters has often run up there is, is they'll use a spotlight to light up the target. So either could be a scenario. <clears throat> he doesn't specify. Um, I know some of these... Um, some of them shoot, um, through a lot of stuff. A lot of these matches don't get shot in that dusk type scenario because it changes so quickly that it's sort yeah, of not, not really fair. If you got 50 shooters and plane. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you would wait till <laughs> it is dark and then shoot it yeah. uh, and go from there. I thought you'd just Get shoot everyone to... at once and ask who you hit. It's Who hit? Yeah, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, person. these guys are good. <laughs> Four scores for everyone. Oh, it's a tough one to break that. <laughs> um, just can't separate them. Right, but, Andy, you were you're under you're under a topic there before. I was just um, yeah, something I've noticed with my new scope that I've got is the illumination is mm. is very very useful. Yep. Like even on like just the one or two power, mm. which is very very dull. Yep. Um, it just brings up something more than. A vague black line. Yeah. I'd say that's probably a must. Yeah. Illuminated reticle could be help and also be a little bit mindful of your magnification and potentially back your magnification off a little bit more than what you normally would. Um, for a, say you're shooting at 500 meters, you're normally at 15 power. Back it off to maybe say 10 or 12 um, and it helps get a little bit more light in um, so you get a bit brighter image. Yep. yep. Uh, one thing that I, I know, uh, we used to do physically when spotlighting. So if you are dialing, for example, you know, if, if that's going to be more more convenient or efficient for you, uh, have the, the hats that will have a light on them or you can get ones with LEDs built into the peak or you can get the magneto speed make a little light that clips under your hat. Something along those lines so you can, you know, if you're going to he- lift your head up to look at your turret, you're actually shining a light on it, but it's not going to come into the scope to be a distraction uh, in, in that sort of things because you don't want to, you don't want a light to, to be shone behind you because that'll hit your your glass and and it, it won't be ideal to look through. Yep. But to have a light that is in that vicinity, I know I've seen other guys who have mounted lights to their rings, mm-hmm. and and sort of shoot it up onto the turret so you get a little bit of light. Often, you know, in the um, spotlighting side of things, it's a red light, so it doesn't mm-hmm. you know, attract a lot of attention. But uh, something along those lines, so you can you can see that, and the, the hat light works well because you can keep it sort of. You know, whatever you're looking at will work well, but it won't. It won't enter the scope. Little fishing um, glow sticks are also mm-hmm. work quite well for that similar, yep. similar arrangement. Yeah, I suppose they'd be handy for your um, drop Fish. chart and all that as well. Yep, absolutely. Um, and low light between stages, I suppose, getting yourself prepped for the stage. Um, mm. Backlit Kestrel is probably really useful. I assume they're probably all backlit now, the 5700s. I'm not, I think so. I'm not sure. I've not played with one enough, but. Um, yeah, they are. Mine is. Mine, mine tells the range. <laughs> Yours is a pretty fancy one. Don't you know, I watched a, uh, a YouTube clip the other night where, uh, where yeah, there there is a sniper team. Well, no, clearly it wasn't. It was an actor team pretending to be snipers, and, uh, and the, the shooter would ask the spotter, uh, what's the range? And she held up a. 
Kestrel, and they went 903 yeah. metres or something. It's like, okay. uh, yeah, that makes oh, sense. Best Kestrel ever. <laughs> could have already been dialed in. Just confirming the range that, like, oh, they've ranged it 900 something metres. Oh, what was that again? Oh, no, the wind blew them away uh, <laughs> at, at, at 13 <laughs> metres a second. Um, wow, that's strong a wind. strong wind. <laughs> well, it did blow them away. Yeah. Well, in all seriousness, so, yeah. it could have actually been linked to a, like, a. Oh, turn it up. It they wasn't. Just, it, was, just... it was a 4,500 <laughs> model or, or that sort oh, of iteration. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah. no. They didn't look like they'd been out of the bloody. Powder Makeup. room much yeah. <laughs> longer than five minutes. They don't know anything. Because I always wear uh, wear makeup when I'm sniping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gotta look your best. <laughs> I do. This is the best it gets, mate. This is the best it gets. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, so any more advice for Chris? Any other sort of? I mean, we've been spotlighting for years. I mean, well, actually, one one question back to you, Chris, which is not really helpful on a podcast, but. Uh, because it, it would change significantly if the area you're shooting from is lit or dark. Mm-hmm. So if the area you're shooting from is lit, eh, what, whatever, do do whatever you like. If the area you're shooting from is dark, um, you know, I, I mentioned lights, but but just in general, like think about that, like get to know your gear, rummaging through your bag in the dark may actually be a useful thing to practice and know which, you know, which bag you're grabbing out or anything along those lines or having light with you. These things are, are, are pretty uh, pretty important and, and, you know, you, you don't, generally run as much kit when you're spotlighting, but you know where where, where stuff, stuff is. is. I mean, being able to like grab a box of shotgun ammo, open it up with one hand, one hand holding the shotgun wrapped around the ute and then trying to dig through the box of ammo to get ammo out is a, is a skill that is useful. <laughs> and, oh, and while everyone's like, yelling, there it is. There, there it is. is. <laughs> Hurry up. It's ready <laughs> there it is. Can't you see it? Like, no, I can see it. I'm just not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those last two shots that came out? They were my only two shots. <laughs> I've got to put two new ones in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes, yeah, shooting yeah. in Australia. Right. Yeah. It's usually a lot more swearing. But <laughs> yeah, well, <it's> family show. <laughs> sure um, probably just another one. Obviously, it depends on the setup, as you mentioned before, whether, whether the area you're in is lit or whatever else. Um, but be just probably be I mind- am lit. Oh, always is. Um, <laughs> be mindful of your night vision and maintaining it. So, you know, if you got your phone on you or whatever. I oh, just after the, you said I was lit, I wanted to hit the. Which one? The, the gangster Dun-dun. one. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't want to just reach. <laughs> that would just be highly unprofessional. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think we've recovered them all. <laughs> Green one if you need it. The the yellow green, one is, uh, green is the Green for Russian. gangster. So yeah. I've, I've shifted that the. That uh, doesn't make sense. The red one should be. The, uh, no, the red one's this. <laughs> Which makes sense to me. It's logical. Yeah, we, yeah. They can't all be red. <laughs> well, actually, they can. <laughs> <laughs> they can, but that's just confusing. <laughs> Hit the uh, red one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've moved the, the road podcaster over and, and, and Dutchie now has access to it, which uh, could be the, Mate, the best whole life decision. decision. If I wanted to do that, you couldn't have stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it was over there. Seeing the bill for all the things you broke. (laughs) Well, I'll put it on the tab. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, sorry. uh, Other spotlighting suggestions? Oh, jeez, it is red. So you're saying, yeah, don't look at your phone, maintain your... Uh, Not so much don't look at your phone, but basically back the the brightness of your phone right down and try to maintain your night vision. Mm. Um, Because, you know, you basically, without getting into the biology Mm. behind it, but essentially you limit your exposure to bright lights. Yep. Mm. Um, and try and limit your exposure to the bluer end of the spectrum, um, mm. and it helps maintain your night vision. Um, just, yeah, helps you see things. Just wear an eye patch on your scope eye. <laughs> uh, yes. Be a buccaneer. Yes, pirate Pete. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and if he wins with his patch? It'll be the next big thing. People will go, oh, the guy who wore the patch won because his eye was never compromised. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All aspects. <laughs> I like to have it. By the way, I, I will like, patent oh, that idea. All those buttons are red now, Dutchy. <laughs> Ridiculous suggestion. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You didn't even, you, you, tr- you went to reach for it and, and nothing. You didn't even press the button. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I know what, and this is the Russian one. <laughs> well done. This is the buzzer. <laughs> yeah, I memorised them all. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm just going to hit mute on that channel. I think there we go. 
Stuck yeah, but you. I saw how you did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, go, you look away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good. Well, Chris, hopefully uh, all the best, mate, for your night match. Uh, I know there's some uh, there's pretty cool night matches over there uh, that happen, and hopefully we see some of that over here. That would be very good. I actually, you know, the the biggest resistance, and this probably uh, sums up things over here a little bit. The biggest resistance we've seen when night matches have been suggestion suggested has been like, but but that's drinking time. When when would we <laughs> when we can't shoot at night? That's when we drink. <laughs> And there's been it's no actually a pretty valid point. <laughs> there's been no thought of like maybe we could we if we're on a night match and we don't start till like seven o'clock at night, we could like drink after and then not go to sleep until ten in the morning and sleep all day, particularly in Darwin where it's hot and sleeping in the day is actually pretty good in aircon. Anyway, sorry, that's far too logical. Yeah. Let's bring it back to a, to all the other <laughs> all the other things. I do like that that has been the biggest point of contention with a night match though. <laughs> It's a legitimate concern. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, we have the next question here. I've never even thought of that. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and what would you do all day? You can't then? drink while you shoot. You yeah. can't drink all day. It's sleep. Well, maybe that should be a good one. Don't go, don't rock up drunk. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. good advice for a match. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't have that yeah. question, though. Uh, next question is regarding twist rate from Andrew Noble. <laughs> what do you think would be the required twist rate to stabilise burger uh, 105 hybrid 6 mil projectiles. <laughs> <laughs> For listeners of the show who have been around long enough, uh, well done, Andrew. I've Good been leaning job. towards it. Yeah. <laughs> Good throw back. Uh, well done. For those who are not familiar with Greg's twist rate problems, go back to episode about six and uh, and carry on from there on in. Mm. Um, well done, Andrew. Good, good throwback. Good job, uh, Timo or Timo. It, does that mean that they in all of those episodes he was on, they never answered that question? Um, uh, I think he answered it. Or is that just himself. funny? He's making it funny. It's, it's hilarious, funny. mate. It's hilarious. <laughs> right. All Good red. Job. All red. Yeah. Uh, Timo or Timo? I don't know how to say that. Uh, anyway, going from a 6.5 to a 6 mil, worth it for PRS and which 6 mil to choose? Oh, we've opened it all up. Andy's shaking his head about a bit. Because you're probably in this position, aren't you? You're running a 6.5 Creedmoor at the moment mm. in production and thinking you're probably flicking over to uh, open or you'd be over to open next year one way or the other. And Unless you tank. <clears throat> doesn't doesn't matter how bad he tanks. He's into, well, he's into my, open next year. My yeet, my yeet tank. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a bit bigger than six, but <laughs> six inch. <laughs> um, right, no, way to, no need to show know. off, mate. Do you know what, that, what I'm talking about? Yeah. Then when... Good yeah. teams just go, oh, no, I want the next next year's best draft pick. So they play like crap. <clears throat> yeah. That concept. You, yeah. You throw all the matches. Mm. Yeah. But then the, uh, no. the So everyone, if he does really poorly. Mm. We know what's going on. That's why I said he just he's sucks. open anyway. It doesn't yeah, matter. Because he's yeah. open anyway. Yeah. I've accepted that. That's right. So uh, you're probably in that position of, of rebarreling or doing something perhaps different next year. Where, mm -hmm. where does this question sit with you, mate? So tossing up between the six and a half or the six. Um <clears throat> I'll probably stick with six and a half uh, purely just for those really windy, gusty days. You're going to have a bit more weight, okay. I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Ronnie, did you want to ruin his dreams or should I? Well, well it depends how quick you're pushing it. Is it? Correct. comes down to how fast you're pushing it. Yeah. makes a yeah. difference. And you can, relatively speaking, push the sixes a <laughs> lot closer to that velocity limit. Yeah. And within the ranges that the PRS matches are generally shot within Australia. 900 metres now. Even still within 900, it's yep, absolutely. bugger all, but majority of your shots. A high velocity, six mil, yeah, it wins. Yeah. But if where do we know where this guy's from? Uh, no, I, I don't know, actually. Um, I just want to be nice to the spotters. Make it easier for them. Yeah, the six are still make enough of a mess. It's just the guys that are run the tw uh, two to threes that are the hateful people. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been to rifles only, so uh, states. Okay, so he's either been there or that he's had a sex change in that photo. Right. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Anyway, we digress. Thanks for your comment. Uh, now that we've just, oh, there we go. Uh, said something about UK from London, England, from London, UK. So well, I said he was from England by the look of that hat. Right. Yeah. It didn't make that call, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Plus he's an AI supporter. Yes, yeah, so that's that's why I thought it was a UK. And that looks like the back of a defender. 
No, no, I don't. I don't. <clears throat> yep. I like that style. The stance he's got is good. Anyway, uh, um, what was the question? Where's he from? England? Where's my hat from? No. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that yeah, wasn't well, the question. Oh, no. No. Sorry. It's going to be relative to the answer as far as if he wants to shoot PRS open in Australia, um, given that the ranges are, for most of your shots, are sub 600 metres for mm-hmm. the vast majority of your shots. Majority, for sure. Something like a um, 250 AI running the 95 grain Match Kings would mm-hmm. be a pretty formidable combination because it's got essentially no recoil. Yep. But, um, but, but that that wasn't his question. Yeah, but that's right. It was to <laughs> if he was saying six and a half or six, expanding. but you know you want to take it to the next next one of you know, the less recoil. Anyway. Yeah, nah. yep. yep. Uh Six point five to six, yeah. You, you, you recall, guys seem to be chasing recall. Yeah, and that's where the two to twenty two two fifty AI yeah. with a heavier projectile or a ninety five gram projectile, you, your BC is pretty, pretty, pretty respectable. Good. Yeah, you're pushing it right up to that thirty two hundred feet per second limit, and you put a horrible break on there to annoy everyone. It really doesn't move much. Yeah, so uh, so. Six mil? You, is that, that's your answer. That, that, are you showing justification for that? Yeah. Um, as sure. to which six mil, there are just there are just so so many options. There's so many options. Um, yeah, and I think uh, I think it's uh, really comes down to what you your know, combination, what you can get, what you're chasing, how customized you want to go, how how variable if you want to be able to buy a factory, all those sort of things are consideration. Yeah, I think availability of components would be a big one. Yeah, it's a, they're all Which, factors. If none of that is an issue, mm. I mean, BRs, something like gay tigers, I mean, depends on how you dress, but um, you know, someone like me, gay tigers is right up there, I think. Mm. Mm. I don't know about that. What is that? A, is that a joke? No, it's a, it's a six, six mil GT. It's a legitimate cartridge. It yeah. is. So, um, there you go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That you will catch up. All right, uh, no, next no, one. I won't. I'm unwilling. <laughs> I forget that. Uh, it's, it's not covered into all aspects. Greg Hamilton. You're right. I should be more open. <laughs> Greg <laughs> Hamilton's made. Uh, well, he's not really asked a question, but he's uh, he's made a comment here. Uh, positive self-talk and managing your conversations at big matches. Being wary of having everyone tell you their mistakes. Any thoughts on the mental side of things at a PRS match? Andy, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're probably most most recent at the most significant level. Just play with everyone else's mind. <laughs> Just put doubt into everyone's. You know. <laughs> you're a prick. I think <laughs> Nick does that best, though. He just heals the <laughs> out of everybody. <laughs> yeah, he does, but I'm not sure he does it in any like significantly conscious way. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's just, it's just he's uh, he's um, he's just enjoying himself. Exactly <laughs> right. right, and he's providing entertainment for everybody else. It's great. Not wrong. Not wrong. <laughs> That's yep. why you got earmuffs. Just turn them off. <laughs> That's yeah, why just, a gaff tape was invented. <laughs> just smile and nod. <laughs> sure. Um, but the, the, the mental game uh, yeah. at these levels is, is you know, is, is, is a factor, particularly the, as you go up the, mm. the ladder, so to speak, it becomes more and more critical. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll definitely listen to anyone who's willing to tell me their, misca- their mistakes or okay. um, yep. what they've experienced, you know, while they were shooting with wind calls and things like that. Um, but then I just try and take the little bits that I need and not worry about, you know, if they're you know, caught up in their own mind as well and not let that mm. affect you. Um, and just, yeah, maybe go with your gut feeling on some sort of stuff. Like some people might say, oh, the wind's really, really howling out there and you think, oh, I don't know. But, yeah, I don't know. I just try not to let other people influence me too much. Do you, do you find that could certainly be a problem where someone's saying, oh, this target's really hard, it's really difficult, being, you know, it's really challenging, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, you've sort of gamed yourself out of that target because you just, oh, if you get so, so bloody hard and, and then you like look back on it afterwards, you're like, probably could have actually hit that, actually. That's one of my strengths. Yeah, yeah. I'll just turn around and go watch me. <laughs> <laughs> Hold my beer. Why are you drinking, Andy? Off the, yeah. off the range. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> No, that's it. I mean, I, I definitely, as everyone else would, is watch a stage and watch other people run it. And if you think you've got enough time to to take more shots or, yeah, gauge your own speed, um, mm. yeah, definitely. Okay. 
Do you have any little uh, pr- processes or procedures that you do sort of every every time you're doing things? Yep. Um, yeah, so I'll definitely <clears> – or <throat> oh, maybe about three shoes before me just really watch what they're doing in terms of um, the order of the targets and the order of the stage mm-hmm. and then figure out if that's the order I want to do it or not and then I'll write my dope in terms of the order of targets that I want to hit mm-hmm. um, and then just – go through the real simple stuff of um, like if I can walk up to my rifle beforehand, check the magnification, check the parallax, check I'm zeroed or dialed to the right thing first, yep. check my cards on, uh, the data cards on, um, look at the, the ground you're on, check your bipod height, you know, and then work out, okay, I'm going to need this bag or this bag. Um, yeah, just go through that sort of stuff um, and then just probably, obviously that would have done before, been done earlier on but um and then maybe one or two shooters beforehand just yeah run through the stage in my mind mentally yep so i know exactly what i need to do when that's about it not rock up and go what's the stage (laughs) what are we doing (laughs) yeah yep yep that happens yeah and if you need to if the if the ro is saying do you understand the course five if you've got any doubt just say ask yeah just just talk it through them and they'll either say yes or no yeah yeah much better to find out then than afterwards. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah, that's a really fair point. Any any other thoughts from anyone? No, I'm pretty rubbish at it, so <laughs> I'm not really one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll pro- probably do a similar thing to you, Andy, in terms of like you know sort of chat away and do the things. But then we're about sort of two or three shooters out, depending on depending on how many in the squad. We'll uh, we'll sort of knuckle down and yeah, yeah, sort of not just go into a zone, just not really talk to anyone and, mm. and just, just focus on getting the gear ready, everything prepped and all that sort of gear yep. and then run through the stage uh, and, and whatever happens, happens, you know, so, mm. so be it. And then probably, probably take another shooter after that to, to mm. just rethink, put everything away, get off the range and, and then think about it for a, for a moment, reevaluate it and then just dump it, leave it there and yep. then move, you know, go back to the, to the squad and. You know, usually jump in and arrow yeah. something, or yeah. or just yak about, and and then then sort of go through that cycle, and and mm. yeah, don't don't try and carry those problems with you for the next stage. Learn from the mistakes, but don't don't carry it on. Mm. Yeah, mm. and wh- while you're standing there waiting for that shooter to finish, mm. that's when I'll probably pay a lot of attention to the wind. I'll probably look then the most just before I'm about to shoot. Yep. 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 <clears throat> Very good. Uh, so Greg Hamilton, I'm not sure if that was, uh, that's what you're talking about, but that's what we did. That's what we did. Have you got, actually, uh, from, from things you guys have seen, have you seen anyone with particular routines or particular processes that they, uh, they do? I've, I've seen Andy just laughing and joking and carrying around. So yeah. yeah. It looked like fun, but then he just said, that's what he was doing. And it sounds really serious. And I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was going to be fun. You're like, no, no, you've actually got to pay attention if you want to do yeah. well. Like, attention? Uh-huh. It's only if you want to do oh. well, though. <laughs> what do I want to do? Do I want to be near the top by myself or just with everyone else at the bottom? Yeah. Probably everyone else at the yeah. bottom. Yeah. Having a laugh. Yeah, oh, it went bang in that. Oh, it's a bit sore. Like. <laughs> ah, you're in the fish. Hey, grateful it went bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the bit Bronte's trying to work out at the moment. <laughs> you know, I was going to say, oh, I better check my firing pin protrusion. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like yeah, a now. euphemism for something. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, next question. Next question. Uh, rimfire questions. Now this is uh, Luke who uh, hit us up with two questions. Greedy. I know. I know. Well, it's not the greediest though. Uh, Luke uh, hit us up with uh, first one was CZ four five five versus four five seven, twenty inch or sixteen inch varmint or sporter. Ha ha ha. I don't understand the ha 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 part. He's just a happy person. He's just he's just enjoying oh, life. That's why I don't <laughs> understand it. Uh, and then he he's going to be down the bottom with us. <laughs> <laughs> rimfire build ideas, suggestions, tips. Uh, so we're talking rimfire and putting something together to shoot matches. Um, is is the thought here? Um, let's uh, do we varmint or sporter? Let's tackle that one first. Barrel yeah. profiles, heaviest profile you can get yeah. your hands on, pretty well. I believe it's called a varmint. <laughs> A what? <laughs> a vomit. Vo- okay, good. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Right. yeah. The heaviest profile I could get with it. The- yeah, which is vomit. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> it's, uh, it's target. Uh, like, you can yeah, get a get target. Pro- oh, good shot on the target. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is that a vomit? <laughs> <laughs> good. So one of those. <laughs> hey? One of those then? 
Well, you so, can have your profiles. You're yeah, a straight you taper. You can. Not from factory. <laughs> well, it wasn't the question. <laughs> So, it's well, part the, of the question. question. The question uh, was vomit or sporter, so that's not the question either. Uh, well, <laughs> but yeah, but, the heavier yeah. one, the heavier one's mm. probably going to be more inclined. It gives you more weight in the gun and it sits better and those sort of things. Particularly the rimfire level, it doesn't really. Uh, you can go fairly heavy on a rimfire, and it's still not that heavy overall uh, as an overall baggage. Mm. Twenty inch or sixteen inch? Apparently, there's no other options. Twenty inch or sixteen? That's it. What do you think? Twenty. Oh, oh, I'd, I'd lean towards the twenty, but. Yeah. Well, I've heard, not sure who it was now, it was a couple of years ago, but he was saying with... Um, was it a guy from the internet? <laughs> bloke from the internet? I was a bloke chatting too, I think, in some gun show. But he, he shoots a lot of twenty two target stuff. Mm-hmm. And he was saying with your barrel length and using subsonics and burn rates of powder and stuff that you, you, all your powder might get burnt out, burnt up within the first 16 inches and then the last few of your bullets actually starting to slow down through the barrel. Is that... Is, this, the, 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 sort of makes sense. Yeah, there is a little bit of uh, thought process in that, and yeah. and the sweet sixteen has been a yeah you know, sort of thought around twenty twos for a long time. It's not as hard or fast because it does depend on ammo and all that yeah, sort of gear you're it. running, of course. But um, I would tend to to go for a bit of a shorter barrel, mm. 16, 18, something like that myself, because uh, you, you you're not you, you're not burning more powder for maneuverable the as twenty. Well. Yeah, just, so. Yeah. But you know, if you are wanting to mimic some stuff from your uh, from your centerfire, perhaps you want to go a little longer. I don't know. We we talk about that a bit later. There's a question on that. Uh, I'd probably be happy with sixteen, something like that. I'm guessing he's looking at a particular model, and they come in those two options. So, yeah, oh, I'm going to go sixteen. The room's divided. I think Andy's on sixteen. The other two lads on twenty. There we go. Stalemate. Perfect. Sixteen varmint. <laughs> Target. At least mine's legal. <laughs> What's right age? There? <laughs> oh, God, you take so long to catch up. <laughs> uh, okay, four five five versus four five seven. Anyone had any experience with both? I never got past the four five two. Okay, I quite like the four five two. I don't really like the switch barrel thing in the four five five. I don't mm. know what a four five seven does, but yep. There you go. Um, Okay, uh, I have a four five two. I have three four five twos. I've got a four five five, and I've not got a four five seven. So none of us are really uh, up to speed on this. However, uh, I'm with you, Dutchie. I prefer the four five two. Mm. I believe the four five seven is a little bit of a more throwback to that. Um, comes with uh, a little bit more. Yeah, I've I've seen a catalogue with them in there, but I'm not. Never, mm. never handled one or shot one. I've so. played with one, but not shot one. Yeah. So, uh, if I was going to buy one now, I would definitely be buying the four five seven. I have a four five five. Uh, yesterday, actually, last night, as I was getting ready to go to the range, one of the guns that I forgot to take with me, I changed the barrel over. Um, I've had this gun for about six years. I changed the barrel over the, for the second time in six years, back from twenty two down to one seven HMR or up to whichever way you look at it. And that's the second time I was utilising the switch barrel feature. That was mm. the big selling point for these guns. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, just buy two, really. Uh, each calibre if you go through that, to be fair. Uh, right. Um, uh, rimfire build, idea suggestions. I mean, voodoo. a little bit broader. Yeah, vo- voodoo, if you're going to get With The heaviest out. profile you can get. <laughs> Target. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> <laughs> or as they yeah, like, are you back on two? Is, no, that's I'm trying to be that cricket commentator. Uh, is it Tony Gregg? Sure, Tony Gregg. I don't know. I One of them. So. And he's yeah. like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. vomit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't okay. He doesn't. He sounds a lot better than that. That's just me. <laughs> me butchering an attempt at his accent. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad someone's having an attempt. You're doing better than the other three of us. Yeah, exactly. I'm. You know, keen. Smashing it. Keen. Yeah. Give me your yeah. rifle. Pay for my ammo. I'm there. <laughs> I'll do all the accents you want. Yeah. All, all accents. Them. All accents. <laughs> Including the precision ones? <laughs> oh, yes. yeah, I'll try. Sorry. I, just, <laughs> I was just thinking like, uh, maybe I'm thinking of the guy off the 12th man who's actually ripping off that guy's <laughs> accent. <laughs> and it's like a further step away. And that's why none of you know what I'm doing. Yeah, I think so. It's not onion. Yeah. Good. Uh, all right, I'm practice. having fun. I don't care. Practice, practice, practice. You guys practice, too serious. Practice, practice, practice. practice. No, nah, I don't practice. No. How do you practice? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've answered that one. And do you, you – here's an, um, a, an interesting question. Well, how do you practice? Do, you, do any of you boys practice? Yep. Do, nods hunting. don't work, Andy. <laughs> nods don't work, mate. Uh, yes? Yes. Yeah, yes. Like, <clears throat> I don't mean to be coy, but all aspects need to be practiced. Mag change, 
magnification change. Well, wasn't that a a, a point at the uh, apocalypse match? Mag Everything. loading, mag yeah. loading, mag changing, getting uh, into position. Yeah, so, yeah, everything. Just so, on yeah. the mag side of things, so many people had uh, we <clears throat> so many matches prior to that were eight or ten round stages for the majority of them. So not a lot of mag changes. Where nearly every stage at the Steel Apocalypse mm. uh, involved a mag change, uh, at least one. Bad thing because that's, that's one great. of those yeah, things that you can make a lot of time, or you can yeah. lose a lot of time on a mag change. And and it was evident. I think a lot of guys took the lesson away from that match of oh, I better practice changing mags. Um, yeah. Once yeah. you once you feel comfortable changing mags and think you've got it really good, film yourself and it'll destroy oh. any confidence you once had. I did that. I did yeah. that. And and I uh, I thought I was pretty quick. I think my time on a mag change was like one point eight seconds or something like that. that. Is which is quick. which is quick. Um I got that down to like one point two or something like that. I feel myself and I, I saw that I hit the mag into the mag log three times before I got it in. I bang, bang, and then in. I went well, that sucks. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, it's, uh, it's, I hope you shoot better than you change mags. <laughs> <laughs> Which wouldn't no, be hard. No, I don't. Mag, nah. changing, mag changing is my best uh, skill in there. Third time lucky, though, so. Yeah, mm. that's right. That's right. So uh, three times lucky. Sometimes. Yeah, I think like practicing a lot of things like clearing brass that hasn't ejected properly, yep. even, you know, not unforeseeable but uncommon things just so it's mm. more like muscle memory when you go to do it. Mm -hmm. It's probably something that's Shooting cool. sideways. Yeah. Not having your hat in the way. Yep. Mm. Yep. It's probably the stoppage sort of thing is probably something more probably the center fire. Uh, sorry, the semi-automatic people would deal with more. But true. Um, you're right though. Mm. If you get a case that doesn't eject properly, and then you you know it's stuck in the chamber and you try to get it out and all those sorts of things, and then you got to instead of dropping oh, the magazine, and then you got to try to jam the next one up behind it, and then yeah. it all really gets bad yeah. from there. Yeah. Even if it. Um, it doesn't clear like completely it, out. Yeah. It extracts but doesn't eject out and you're yep. like trying to mash it in there and you don't know what's going on. Yep. Yeah, that's the old drop the mag. Oh, yep, that helped. Yeah. Put it back in. <laughs> work out, yeah, work out your routine, I suppose. Yeah. Um, mm. And then practice it so when it does happen, it's just a matter of going, oh, that's happened. Mm. Bang, yep. go to my five-step process. Bang, close the bolt, we're back in action. Yep. Mm. So, yeah, practice is key for me because I never get out. That's all I get today. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you get today, yeah. Andy. Um, yeah, I just something that crossed my mind then was maybe getting to know what a like cycling the bolt onto <laughs> yeah. an empty chamber feels, feels like. like. Sounds like even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. That's that is actually a pretty good point because uh, I can't say I've ever actually had the whole close the bolt and click and go. Oh, shit, oops. Yeah. But I've seen a lot of people do it, and it's one of those things you're just really conscious of. Yes, I've. I can feel the extra resistance of picking yeah. up around yeah. that's, versus not picking up around. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, that's a 30-second um, – mm. yeah. Depends on the range. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it depends on the range. Yep. Either way, it's a bad day. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Because you should definitely feel some even, resistance pushing forward. Even if it's no penalty, it's still the fact that you took the time to close up around yeah. it. Like it's it's five-second, ten-second penalty mm. built into the fact that you just didn't take a shot. Mm -hmm. Got yourself in position. Oh, this is going to be a great shot to hand click. Ah, uh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. It helps when there's ammunition in there. So yeah. it, it doesn't it, – it, it's a penalty either way. Yeah. I, uh, when we were back running the public shooting range stuff, uh, I we, um, I could pick it on a twenty-two by sound uh, because I went oh, – we went through hundreds of thousands of rounds of that place. And and I remember, you know, like someone would close up on an empty, and these are relatively new shooters. I'm like, just stop for a second. And they're like, why? I'm like, you haven't got a round in the chamber. They're like, how do you know that? Well, just try it. And they opened it up and there was nothing in there. I'm like, I am yeah, Rimfire and Nadamus. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> you had to Rimfire. Could, could hear it on a, <laughs> on a rim to me. empty chamber. You have that. Yeah. The, the only reason, the only reason for that is because, as I said, hundreds of thousands of rounds went through mm. that place and you just, you'd be listening, you know, for it and you just, oh, yeah, that didn't sound right. And and you're right, like practicing that feel, it doesn't feel right or it doesn't sound right or whatever it may be. Yeah, you don't get that resistance. Yeah, it, it'll, I've seen guys who have practiced that and do know it and you watch them close up and then like cock their head for a second, pull it back open, check, and then like chuck change their mag or put the mag in yep. or tap it back up or something on those lines and they pick it and they don't, like, they save. I'm, I'm, I'm looking there going, don't pull the trigger, don't pull the trigger, yeah, whatever it might be. And mm. Yeah, they've worked it out really uh, really quick. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's it's really good to uh You are going to, to practice that. that. Yep. Maybe use snap caps, just FYI. Yeah. Yep. If you're at home. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yep. <laughs> 
Oh, is that why my neighbours hate me? <laughs> <laughs> Every time they just look at me like... No, they don't mind the ones that don't go back. so noisy and I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Where did all these holes on the fence come from? <laughs> oh, they were there when I bought the house. Birds <laughs> flying <laughs> too fast. Farming problem. Good. Yeah. And stopping. Farming. Quickly. <laughs> So, <laughs> right, I'm not sure we've covered that, but practicing. How do you practice? No, I, think, so, well, I don't think you can practice enough, to hey, be honest. One of the things I think Gary, uh, this is from Gary. I don't know if I mentioned his name, Gary. Uh, this is uh, one of the things that I try to do, and I, you know, I talked about my administrative day at the range today, but I, I went there with a plan and, and went there with certain things that I wanted to achieve. And, and the same would go if you were going to go there to practice. You're going to go, right, I'm going to do this on the on the on on this barricade and I'm going to practice standing, shooting, or practice with a sling or whatever it is and go and do those things and just enact them. Having a plan rather than rocking up the range and then you start getting distracted from talking to someone, which is all good fun. That's all what you're there to do. But you can often you know, get back and finish the day and pack it all up and go, I only did about a quarter of what I was intending to do and I, I really didn't actually get a lot from that. Mm. He also says the next part of his question was... Oh, well, hang on. I've just oh, sorry, got, a, sorry. I've got a, Let's go back to it. Um, just on the whole practice Another thing. aspect. Yeah. This, this, um, just um, w- with your training, I suppose, um, there's a saying that I've, we've always used... Um, I thought you on this say, podcast, yeah, always. This, I mean, every time this, I come in here, it's always this. We start our session off with like amateurs train until they get it right, whereas professionals train until they get it wrong. And I got stuck with these guys. So like, yeah, I don't know what's so going we, on. We get it wrong a lot. Yeah. So does that mean we're professionals? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeling the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> No, right. we, we still haven't got it right. That's the whole thing. We're still uh, like, oh, when we get it right, we'll be like, we are kings of the world, yeah. podcast. Oh, okay. So that Whereas a professional would be like, that's just another day at the office. Where does yeah. it go wrong and why does it go wrong? I'm, just because you get it, start to get it right, don't stop because yeah. what are you going to do when it goes wrong? Knowing how to deal with it when it goes wrong. Mm. We've got a long way to go, gentlemen. Mm. <laughs> I generally just hit this button. I hit this one. It's a good button to hit, actually. That's yeah, good memory. memory. Yeah, so I remember. I was the yeah, all, they are all red now. Yeah. Uh, all right, next question, uh, Jamie Miller. How many rounds through a new barrel before starting load development? Any any ideas? Two, <laughs> maybe two? three, maybe three. I don't know. Okay, one or two to bore cider, and then you're good to go. I mean, go. Okay. Low development being a continual thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, I guess it kind of comes down to how you do your low development though. Because if, well, myself, I don't really shoot groups until I've actually already got my velocities all nailed down and my standard deviations are low. And then I'm adjusting seating depth to get my groups to look somewhat like I'd like them mm-hmm. to look. Okay. So one of the, th- the thoughts out there, uh, and, and, you know, not just a thought, is that, Things speed up as you uh, you get a few rounds down your range. And so Trent, uh, who many of you guys know, uh, Trent uh, sent me a photo the other day of, of his uh, velocities 10 rounds in to his gun. He didn't do much load development on it. He basically just sort of picked a load, went with it, shot bloody 0.3 uh, minutes. It's pretty uh, awful. It's pretty horrible. And uh, his SD was 8. Uh, he didn't also change his awful. load. Yeah, didn't change his load, and he increased about thirty-eight feet per second from the ten rounds, mm-hmm. and then uh, and that was a one, two, three, four, five. He shot ten rounds over a uh, after oh, the first ten rounds. He shot over chronograph, and he ended up with eight SD, twenty-eight ES, and uh, and average of two thousand six hundred ninety-one. After one hundred and seventy-five rounds, he ran another fifteen across the chronograph. And he ended up with a SD of under five, uh, ES of 18, and gained just over 38 feet per second from where he started. So over those 160-odd rounds, he had picked up a little bit of speed on a brand-new barrel. Yep. But what did he, did he sort of suggest what his groups looked like after? You know, his 15 rounds that he shot after the fact – were they still grouping don't pretty know. well? Don't or know. Were I don't they know that data. Blown out to three minutes and throw it away and start again. Based on his SDs, his SDs look. Yeah. His second lot of SDs great. Yeah. You, know, you sure as hell wouldn't argue with that. Mm. Um, but but the the potential there, I guess the thought there is that perhaps he's onto a different node as he's uh, as he's increased forty feet per second. 
I think it'd be pretty unlikely in yep. to to have a node forty feet per second far, uh, apart yep. at twenty seven hundred feet. It could be off the node. It's, it's possible. Mm. Could yeah. I, I generally, and, and so my practice has been to throw 150, like a, a, a bulk amount down the gun, get used to the gun, get familiar with it. That's going to help my shooting better than doing really intense low development straight up. Get familiar with the gun, run it on barricades and do this and bits and pieces for a hundred and so rounds and then starting getting into something a little bit more detailed. That's been my practice. So, Sort of depends on your calibre as well because you've got a to- a caliber that's only good for a thousand rounds before the barrel's roached. Sure. Yep. Yeah. You you use ten percent of your barrel before you actually start, and then depending how you do your load development, you're probably looking at certainly fifty rounds to get a a really rock solid, comfortable load. My well, last one was nine, but okay. But but <laughs> is that fully? But yep. did you have anything going into it, or was that just Nothing. blank slate? Blank yeah, slate. It's quite yep. fortunate. Yep. Yep. It's gone down some uh, particular methods and tried, but yeah, yeah, nine rounds and and, and, and the last two, uh, three, went okay. We're on with that, and then and then developed, okay. yeah, then reloaded that, and it worked great, and then moved on from there. So, yeah, but anyway, that's uh, d- sort of different ways to do it. Thing one day I'm sure we'll cover in depth on load development, and some different theories and ideas on that. That'll be really good. But uh, Jamie, uh, how many rounds we are we are split on this uh, this thought? Many many guys just get a couple down range and then and then go for it. Um, there are some who do that. I have having said having said all this uh, a number of years ago when I borrowed a Tiki A one when they first came out and I had the privilege of borrowing one for a little while. I ran a chronograph on that thing. Um, uh, on the same day, fresh barrel, and then turned around in and uh, didn't see any difference. Mm. So uh, results may vary. Mm. Your results may I think, vary. I think the point um, that you're checking it as well is part of that development, I suppose, to a point. Like not so much you're changing anything but still mm. checking that uh, what you think you have is what you have um, – at a later date, you know, I guess you could throw that into load development. Yeah, yeah, keeping an eye on it broadly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that load validity, call it. Yeah, where, you know, okay, great, I've got a load that shoots acceptable accuracy or yeah. acceptable precision, great SD. Yep. At two hundred rounds through the barrel, now seven hundred rounds through the barrel, or five hundred rounds through the barrel. What's it doing? What's it doing? Yeah. And I know. Is that dimple? Yeah. Is dimple. I should have walked here. Do you want some? No, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking the same, but it's way too far to walk. <laughs> <laughs> no amount of dimples worth that walk. No. Well. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not walking, walking 50Ks. Oh, yeah. I just, yeah. Or 40Ks or whatever Not that far and it's all downhill. That's <laughs> 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 not quite as bad then. <laughs> so uh, opinions vary, Jamie. Opinions vary. Sorry. That's Sorry, right. I just saw a the dimple and went, oh, hello. It's quite that? a distinctive bottle, isn't it, with a mm. nice lace on the outside. It's good. Speaking of dimple, uh, another question from Aaron. Uh, Aaron, now, um, Aaron, appreciate the question. Maybe frame it a little, a little clearer. I'll read it verbatim and then we'll try and work out exactly what we're doing. SD, BC, ballistic tips and monolithics. 204 versus 2D3, what hammers the nail harder? The largest hammer, <laughs> traveling with the greatest momentum. Yeah. Look, I, I will clarify: we're all aspects of precision and long range rifle shooting, not carpentry. <laughs> well, it could be a dead blow hammer for panel beating. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I've, I've, yep, okay. All aspects See, lacking all aspects of other items. I mean, That's right. we, it's probably... shooting adjacent. You could be knocking a dent caused by a muzzle break or bullet hole. I don't know. Yeah, we digress. Right. I think the crux, I'm going to, I'm going to guess the crux of the question from Aaron is 204 versus 2 to 3. Uh, Bronte, I thought it was pro- about evolution. And like, yeah. <sighs> Monolithic. Monolithic and there's yeah. another one in there, BC. Right, let's, let's, <laughs> let's deal with 204 versus 2 to 3 first and then we'll delve into the deeper problems of life. Uh, you've probably got the, the most experience with 204s, Bronte. Um, personally, for a, a spotlighting style rifle, my favourite is a 204 with a 40 grain VMAXs. Um, they are a really great combination um, and that's my go-to for 
foxes and whatever else. Yep. Um, and you look at the ballistic performance of that versus everyone's favourite load with their 22-250 with 55ers or 50s. Mm-hmm. Um, ballistically, you're better on wind. Okay. And you're a lot quieter mm-hmm. and, yeah, it's a more enjoyable um, round. And, I, yeah, ballistically, you yeah. Okay. The same if not better. The, the I mean, compared to a 23, they're, they are – they are very different. You, you're, you're far better with your analogy or your, your comparison to a 22 to 50 because that's mm. a lot, lot closer to what they are. And so, you know, 204 versus 2 to 3, it's going to be a 204 every time. 204 However, if you want to run factory ammo, the 2 to 3 is pretty convenient from that perspective. Absolutely. From a convenience point of view, yeah, absolutely. And, and 204 versus 22 to 50, I went to 22 to 50. I, I, uh, the advice I was given, this is many, many years ago, and I didn't know as much then, um, still lacking in plenty of aspects, but, you know, that's why you guys are here. The 22 to 50 was less finicky with loading. Uh, now, I've had multiple uh, stories that 204s can be a little harder to get shooting well, and particularly when I was starting out in that side of things, that was a concern for me. Mm. Now, would I, would I be concerned now? Not so much, uh, Bronnie. Any any truth to that in your experience? I haven't had a huge amount of experience with twenty two two fifty. Yep. But the couple that I have had been involved in, um, the reason I was involved in is because they weren't working and I couldn't get them to bloody work. They yeah, just, okay. uh, There must have been another problem somewhere that, else. That seems like um, it's, it's more. And it was, yeah. They were just a bloody big of a thing. You but, know, inch and a half was at hundred meters was the best. No matter what you tried, that yep. was all it would do. Um, the two hundred fours. Just to be clear, the two hundred fours that I'm referencing all ended up shooting well. They just took a little bit of time. They weren't. They weren't like problematic of something's wrong here. Yeah. They were. Uh, yeah. Okay. A little bit more finicky. A little bit more seating depth sensitive. Those sort of finer details. I, I ended up. I've had twenty two. Uh, I've had twenty two. Twenty two to fifties. No, incorrect. <laughs> Three twenty-two two fifties in my life. All of them shot the same load, and all of them shot under half a minute with the same load. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. I'm incredibly lucky with that. I will admit that, but they uh, they seem to be fairly resilient. Re- that's a word, isn't it? Resilient. resilient. Yeah, yeah. Back onto uh, my radio career. Good. Yeah. Okay, so what's our answer for that? Uh, two hundred four is definitely a harder hitting hammer for than two to three. Yeah, a 204 over a 223 would be my personal preference because I reload. If I was essentially forced to use factory ammo, I would probably lead towards a 223 Mm -hmm. um, over a 204 purely because the price um, availability of different options. Granted, that has improved with a 204, but you still are kind of limited to 32 grain or 40 40. grain. It either works or it doesn't, and if it doesn't, well, you shit out of luck sort of thing. There's not a lot of... Yep. Options on that front. Assuming the SDBC ballistic tips and monolithics are all related to that particular question, uh, SD is going to c- probably come down to how well you load, so it's irrelevant. Well, probably two to three might be a little bit more forgiving in that because sure. of your um, powder stack yep. uh, ratio versus your your projectile diameter. Yep, is probably a little bit more forgiving, but yep, B- BC splitting hairs. You're going to trump a lot of that with your velocity. You'll get out. Well, your of BC of, of a if you run a forty grain. Um, 204 projectile, the BC of those versus the comparable weight in two to three is way better. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, you know, throw a 90 grainer down there and you got a decent BC. So but you're not going to be, you're not going to be punching <laughs> that same velocity. That's exactly though, right. So the 204 so. is going to win on velocity over that one. Ballistic tips, monolithics, uh, choose, choose, choose what you want. In I haven't that, seen that too many regard. monolithic 204s. Uh, high is probably about the only options in 204 and two to threes is there's limited. I mean, yeah, barns as well, but oh, yeah, it's sort of limited in, in some options there. Um, yeah, but they'll, they'll hammer pretty hard. So yeah. Anyway, that's it. Well, guys, thanks for the questions. We are going – we got a few more questions. We're going to hit them up in the next episode, uh, which we're going to do now. Uh, but, uh, guys, checking it out, thank you for that. Thanks to our Patreon supporters for watching, uh, stalking, watching, one of the two. Thanks for your support. And uh, what is what is coming up? The Bucken, uh, the Ignition Custom Winter Classic is the next.